Hi folks, Dan from DNA and Custom Creations. In a previous video that was uh, titled Bevel versus Dimensional Accuracy, uh, at the end I sort of concluded that uh, you could make some measurements based on that bevel and adjust your dimensions of your part to uh, get better accuracy, better desired dimensions. A viewer after looking at that uh, wrote me and said that he was doing corrections by adjusting his kerf value. And so I started thinking about that and looking at it, and I actually think that that's probably a much better solution than the way that I suggested. And so I thought it might be good to uh, go through a little discussion of KERF and uh, uh, actually do some experiments to see how KERF affects the, your dimensional accuracy and see if we can't come up with a little better way of uh, doing that. And in, in addition, uh, all of your CAM programs require you to compensate for KERF in some way. Uh, I use Fusion 360, so mine will be pertinent to that, but all of them require you to do some sort of compensation. So we're going to look at the effect of that as well. Okay, this may wind up being a two-part thing if it gets a little long. Uh, regardless, uh, we're going to do some, uh, take a look, do some experiments, and look at ways of actually trying to come up with what's the true KERF. Uh, that you're getting out of your machine, whether that's a hypertherm or whatever it is. And uh, we've got uh, two options for that, and um, we'll see what we can come up with. Okay, let's start with some of the basics of what KERF is, and uh, many of you probably already know. Uh, when you look at the word KERF and where did it come from, and you look at Google, the uh, repository of all knowledge, uh, it says it has a root word of called KERBIZ, uh, it's a Germanic word. Uh, been around for a long time, uh, but we know kerf is just the amount of material that's removed in the cutting process. Whether that cutting process is a saw blade, you got to count for the width of that saw blade, or a plasma torch, or a water jet, laser, etc. Been around for a long time. People have been cutting wood a lot, whole lot longer than we've been cutting with plasma, uh, and so that's probably where some of it originated. Uh, the, the little drawing here, the little cartoon, uh, is for half-inch material. I've taken this from the ESAB website that makes some great equipment. And it shows notionally the difference between, say, plasma, laser, water jet, and, and oxy-fuel. And you see plasma looks like it's got the biggest kerf. Uh, they say that for half-inch material, it's typically 150 thousandths of an inch. If I go and look at my hypertherm manual for my uh, 45XP, uh, half inch material says I should use a curve of, of 77 thousandths. That's about half of that value. Uh, regardless, uh, uh, this is a notional thing and it's what we'll use kind of as we discuss this thing. In the, uh, my 45 XP manual, here's the cut charts for a mild steel. And this is where I'm saying if you look down here at the um, a half inch material, uh, you see that it's saying that uh, for half inch material, I should be using 77 thousandths. That's where that come from. And you can find your curve values in here uh, in this cut charts. Uh, so in every case when we're doing our cut, whether you're cutting on a, a you know, wood saw with a, a blade or our plasma torches that are on our tables in this particular case, Again, Hypertherm 45XP and a Langmeyer uh, Pro uh, table, you've got to do curve compensation. And so, uh, while we can get those cut uh, curve values that we should be using out of the cut charts, we can find that they're inaccurate. And in fact, uh, so the testing we'll do will show just how bad that is. There are three ways of actually compensate for curve. One was the way I kind of suggested, where you adjust the dimensions of the part to compensate for curve. But again, in hindsight, I think that's a real painful and, and, and not, not a good approach. Uh, two, let the post processor do it. Uh, add the compensation uh, to the cut path. Uh, or you can let the CNC controller do it, where you provide it a G code that it has the actual dimensions of original dimensions. And then in the controller, let it uh, add that compensation value. So uh, we're going to talk more about Fusion 360 here because that's what I use. But again, all of your CAM programs are going to require you to do some compensation. I don't know how they do it, uh, but uh, this information should be appropriate and pertinent to those different uh, methods. 
So in Fusion, there are two selection options that are, you know, pertain to a kerf and how to compensate for it. One, the primary one, is the sideways compensation selection, selection, which allows you to select either do left compensation or center or right. And then in addition, there are two compensation types. One is called in computer and one is in control. Okay, let's start a discussion of this sideways compensation by using the, the default for our uh, plasma table, at least in Fusion 360, as being left compensation. And while the word left would imply that you're always to the left uh, where you want to be, it really depends on whether you make an inside cut or an outside cut. Um, so let's look at left for an outside cut and our default direction of travel, which is clockwise for an outside cut, uh, the left compensation moves your kerf, one half of that kerf value outside of where you want to cut. So let's say this uh, solid black line is, is what you want. You want to cut uh, out of, of a piece of material this size of what you want remainder. And so let's say this is a 50,000 kerf. Well, then it will move that kerf 25,000 outside of this. And so your new path, your new cut path is actually 25,000 outside of uh, the center line of this. And so what the result is that you're left with theoretically, if you've got your kerf right, uh, theoretically you're left with the correct outside dim dimension. Now for an inside cut, left, uh, we're still talking left, uh, so an inside cut is moving counterclockwise is, is the default, and so it moves the cut path one half of that curve value to the right. Even though it's still left compensation, when you're doing an inside cut, it's actually moving the, the curve, one half of the curve diameter, uh, so the curve radius, inside of what you want to cut, so that once it's done cutting, then whatever is inside of this dark uh, uh, solid line is obviously left, so it falls out. Uh, the, the inside part of that falls out. So now let's look at right. The only thing right does, it does exactly the same as left, except it changes the path direction. Uh, so here now, uh, for left, you're again, uh, or for an inside cut, again, you move to the, to the left or the outside of that desired cut path, but instead of moving clockwise, you're now moving counterclockwise. Similarly, for an inside cut, you're moving clock, uh, clockwise in this case, which is not typical for what we you know, uh, have seen when we use our plasma cutter in the default. So that's an interesting, and we'll actually do a test cut that shows when we select the right or select versus left what happens. Here's a coupon. We're going to turn uh, cut the first one left. This is 11 gauge steel, and you'll notice that uh, on this cut being a left compensation, that the inner circle goes counterclockwise and the outer goes clockwise. Here's the same cut, uh, except for we're now going in right compensation. And notice the direction change. So the inner goes clockwise, the outer goes counterclockwise. That's the only difference between those two cuts. One, the first one was left, the second one right. And so, you know, right versus left, again, the only difference between right and left is that it changes the direction of motion. So if this is left outside, uh, it's moving clockwise, which is we typically see. If you were to select right compensation, the only difference you're going to see is it's moving in a counterclockwise uh, direction. Now, we know from the past discussions that the uh, plasma jet has a, a, a good cut side and, a, and I guess a bad cut side. And it's, I, I believe, if I understand it right, uh, when you're creating a plasma jet, and it creates a circular flow of that plasma to, to make it the jet stay within a nice a column, 
that the rotation of that jet can give you, if you're on one side of that rotation, you're getting a bad cut, and the other side of the rotation, you get a good cut. And so that's why we typically use left compensation so that that jet is moving around whatever you're trying to cut with the good side of that jet, good cutting side of that jet in the right position. All right, now we're on the center. Even though center is in a compensation selection area, it doesn't compensate at all. Center moves your jet, the center line of that jet, directly on the path uh, of your design. So again, if we're looking at this black line as what our design calls for, center is moving that jet right directly on top. Uh, so it's not compensating at all. So obviously, you're not going to get the desired dimension uh, if you use that. However, uh, since center's not making any compensation, we're going to postulate this thing down here. That if we took our uh, cut dimension minus the design dimension, we're going to know what this actual kerf is. Because you're taking half a kerf on this side, half a kerf on this side, uh, which winds up being a total kerf, that if I take my design dimension uh, minus the actual cut dimension, I'm going to know what the true kerf is. We'll see what that, uh, if that holds true when we get around to cutting that. All right, so in Fusion 360, I have created a little, this little coupon, two inches on a side with a one inch diameter circle. But uh, in this particular case, I've said that the kerf is 150,000. So when I, I gend it up and, and uh, did a, uh, a cut path, you can see that it's created this cut path assuming this white space represents the size of the kerf. Uh, in a similar manner now, if I go went in and said, no, I'm, I want the kerf to be a 56 thousandths, which is what it's supposed to be according to the book for 11 gauge, you can see how the, the difference in the, in the kerf sizes look. Now, so what is the effect of that? So if I said my kerf was 150 thousandths and it creates the white area, it's saying, okay, I'm gonna cut right along this, uh, I guess that's blue. Uh, I'm gonna move along this cut path, but since I have 150 thousandths kerf, I'm thinking that I'm removing every bit in that white area. When in reality, I do the cut and it turns out that the, the kerf is only this red area well then, everything that's uh, on the inside and outside of that red area winds up being an error uh, because it thinks it's cutting the white area, but in reality it's cutting the red. And this is what allows us to use kerf and make some changes in kerf size in order to affect the dimensions of the whatever it is we're cutting. All right, well, we've uh, talked about sideways comp. Let's talk about the compensation type. Uh, within Fusion 360, and there are two that you can choose from, in computer and in control. Uh, in computer just lets the post processor add that compensation value to your, your cut path uh, for your design. So if you have a design with a one inch uh, diameter circle, well then it's gonna add your kerf value that you used uh, in the post processor, so your G code's already gonna have that information in it. <clears throat> now this, it, we can find those values of kerf in, in the cut charts as I showed, but if they're wrong, then you know even in con in computer is going to give you a wrong dimension. In control, the way I understand in control is that it allows you to use the CNC controller that's at your machine uh, to do that compensation value. Now that doesn't work for our Langmire. We can't do that on our Langmire. Uh, but uh, what I understand is that that was a common in the early days of CNC, where you would create your G code. You'd take it to your machine, you'd put it in the machine, and then at the machine, you would, co you would type in or, or code in the curve value, and it would take place, it would account for that right at the machine. Um, if I'm wrong on that, you know, someone uh, send me a, a post and let me know that that's not exactly the way it works. All right, since on test cuts we're gonna do uh, our 11 gauge, let's look at the 11 gauge values that uh, we're gonna assume. Uh, here is the cut chart. Now, there is no 11 gauge. Uh, there goes from 10 to 14 gauge. So I've just simply interpolated between the, the 54 and 57 and said, okay, I'm gonna use 56 thousandths for my kerf. 
If I was doing a, a fine cut, uh, then I, it winds up being 51,000. And that's what I use in my uh, curve dimensions. Whether that's right or not, we're going to find out here. Well, as expected, uh, the video has gotten too long, uh, so I'm going to break it up into two parts. Uh, the next part is where we'll do a number of the cuts, the experimentation, and we'll go look at two methods to try and determine what our true kerf is, because that's what we ought to be using to uh, uh, make sure that we get the right dimensions. And also uh, a method for uh, how to tweak that kerf and which direction to go to get closer to your dimensions, whether you get increase the kerf or decrease the kerf, etc. So uh, the interesting stuff's in the next one. So I apologize, that'll be part two uh, and should follow this almost immediately. Thanks.